Hi there, Johnny Vandeford, Lorain County Community College, MEMS and Microelectronics Manufacturing Program, and MERIT, Manufacturing, Electronics, and Rework Institute for Training. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about a very important process that a lot of our industry partners are requesting students get trained and educated in, and that is how to crimp connectors onto the ends of wires. Crimping is a necessary component for doing box building and ultimately taking a printed circuit board or electronic hardware and ultimately connecting it into the final product, be it something as small as a portable device or something as large as, say, an uninterruptible power supply. Um, either way that you're looking at it, uh, crimping is a relatively simple uh, thing that can be done, but at the same exact time, it is easy to do it incorrectly, which can cause very bad results down the line. And so what I'd like to do is to show a video in terms of how this is done uh, so that you can use it for demonstration purposes. We're gonna be needing three tools in order to do this. First thing we're gonna need is a pair of wire cutters. And I've got my wire cutters here that have all sorts of little markings that are on the front of it for the different gauges of wire. Wires come in different gauges, AWG for American Wire Gauge. I, for instance, I've got some brown wire on this spool right here. If you read what the uh, words say that's on there, this is a 16, circled in black there, AWG. This was donated to us by the nice folks over at RBB Systems down in Worcester. Thank you very much for helping supply us with uh, parts that help keep our program going under a lower lab fees. Um, different wires come in different gauges and therefore different uh, connectors uh, are used for different types of wires. This is 16 gauge wire, which is good for carrying uh, somewhere, I believe around 10 amps of current. The one that I always remember is 14 gauge wire is good for 15 amps of current. That's common in many houses. 12 gauge wire is good for 20 amps of current. Um, those are common wires that you'll find in any, any house that you'll uh, find here in the United States. So you will need uh, wire cutters. You will need a pair of wire strippers. These are strippers that strip the insulation off the wire without cutting into the strands. You will need a crimper of some sort. I'm using um, the IWISS IWISC uh, crimper. I'm gonna to try to display the model number with this here. I don't have any preference to any tools. I know a lot of electricians prefer the use of Klein as a brand. Uh, we're a community college, so we don't have the, uh, the best of budget at all the times with it here. So we try to uh, spend things on uh, tools that, uh, for instance, I've seen being used at other companies. Uh, and then the other thing that we use is we have a uh, crimp kit that we use that has all kinds of different connectors. And you can see on some of these connectors, they have different um, wire gauges that are used for each one and the crimp connectors get wider uh, and wider for each of the forks that they have on there we're going to be uh using an m6 fork spade that's one of these guys here and they come in these little bags on the inside where there's lots of them that we're going to use so how is crimping supposed to be done first thing that we do is we're going to take some wire I'm not quite sure what's at the end of this wire right here. I don't know who used it last. What I'm going to use is the cutters to be able to just cut the end off of the wire just so that there's a piece missing with it. Safety glass is recommended to be used if you can for it. Now, a lot of people think that this is the only tool that you really need to use, that I can just kind of uh, take the wire right here, cut around it in sort of a circle and sort of pull the end of it off right there. And now I've got some exposed uh a, a stranded wire with it. Um, in a pinch, you could do this if you're assembling something that is uh, kind of being used as a, as a hobby or in a prototyping kind of environment. But if you're building something that goes out to the field, I have very likely destroyed some of the strands that are on this wire. I have very likely pulled the wire in an unnecessary way to where the wire is now elongated and it is not as long, or is not as thick as what it was. All wires have safe carrying current capacity and uh, the safe carrying current capacity uh, or ampacity of a wire is the amount of current a wire can safely have flowing through it before it starts to get really, really hot uh, and damaged and uh, uh, cause uh, other problems with it. All wires, uh, have an ampacity or a safe carrying current capacity rating. 
for it. 16 gauge wire is around 10 amps in terms of uh, how much wire it is. I think it is. I know 14 is good for 15. That's the main one to recommend. 14 gauge wire is good for 15 amps. That's the one that I kind of always re remember off the top of my head. Uh, but I just happen to have six amps, uh, uh, 16 gauge wire just sitting here. But if I cut some of the strands off, now let's say for instance that there's 10 amps of current flowing through it, but there's less metal. So now really effectively, there's only nine amps of current that can go through here. And that's now gone over what the limit of what the wire is actually supposed to be carrying if it's been done correctly. And that means that this wire could get hot, a uh, connection could fail. If it's behind a wall of a house, it could start a fire. If it's touching insulation, it gets too hot. Or if it's inside of a device, it could start to get uh, overheated with hot spots or something, and it could fail long term in the field. This would potentially not be present for years and years later down the line. So I don't want that to happen. Uh, what instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that part of the wire off even where I pulled it. That way I start with a fresh strand to it here. And I wanna use the wire strippers so that I get about a centimeter or so worth of wire, not even a centimeter or so, about a pinky nails worth of distance with that of insulation off. And I've got the wire uh, inside here. I've got it put in the appropriate number in the strippers. And I'm going to now strip some of that wire off. I have a nice clean strip and I gripped onto the wire in a controlled way to where I haven't pulled or you know, stressed the wire in terms of what it's supposed to be. And that's really kind of what you want to have when you're stripping the insulation off of a wire, okay? So that's the first big one. That's actually the thing that a lot of people really do incorrectly first is they think, oh, all I've got is this, that's all I really need. Yeah, if you're doing it inside of a, inside for like a hobby or something like that, maybe, but professionally, no. Uh, and if somebody says, no, I'm pretty good and, and do that. No, no, you're not. Uh, even though you are, we're human, we make mistakes. This tool helps to control it to where we do not make those mistakes and we help create reliability in the long term uh, out in the field. So that's the first big step. The second one that we need now is we need to be able to use the crimping tool. Now the crimping tool has some teeth that are here and inside of these teeth are what is going to ultimately create a cold weld on the crimp that's going to push the metal into the wire and fold the plastic over onto the onto the metal parts here and that's done by pushing this together in such a way to where eventually they click and then I push it as hard as I can and eventually that will open it back up again once it's done. And it's important to note that one side of this has an insert that is meant to push and cold weld the connection. And that's on either side of uh, these guys here uh, in terms of what's there. So one side is meant to fit on a particular part of the crimp. If we look closely at the crimp connector and we notice that it is not entirely, entirely cylindrical, that there is on the uh, upper half here, there is a uh, thinner diameter and on the bottom half, there is a thicker diameter. So the thinner one is the one closer to the metal. That is the one that we want to compress and cold weld using the crimp tool uh, onto here. So where the uh, larger uh, parts that are kind of jutting out, that's where we want the crimp tool to actually be placed. The crimp will be kind of placed in here sort of as such, although not in that side. The other thing to note is that on the sides of it here, the colors of the crimps are standards. And so there's a red one, a blue one, and a yellow one, you may notice that there's two screws on either side. That's because if I want to, usually when you buy crimp tools, they come with a little kit of different types of uh, connectors that you can apply uh, in terms of the size of them. For instance, I have another one that's in the pocket right here that's used for connecting a different style of uh, uh, crimp if I wanna crimp these guys together uh, for a different size wire uh, in particular or a different size uh, connector or something like that. Um, if I needed to uh, with it, I can just unscrew these two screws, loosen these guys out and put new ones in uh, for being able to do that. So uh, let's show you how to do this here. So I'm gonna put the red crimp inside the red insert, making sure that the thinner side is on the part where the teeth happen to be. And to help kind of oops, uh, hold this into place here, I'm gonna close the crimping tool so that it at least just gently holds it uh, into place. Now the placement of the wire is also very important. I'm gonna show this as best as, my, as best as I can on my camera, right? So I'm gonna insert it from the one side. I definitely want metal sticking out 
onto the other side. I don't want it poking all the way through that it extends beyond the tines of the, uh, of the fork connector, but I don't want the metal just stuck inside the plastic. I need to be able to see it on that little part of the Y part of the crimp connector so that it's there. I need to see that it gets flattened with it, right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press down as hard as I can on that crimp tool, forcing it all the way down. That has now pinched those guys together at this point. And now I'm going to let it go. And now I've got a crimped connector on um, in a uh, particular way to where it is nice and snug. I can hold on to it, I can pull it, and it stays there. Uh, some companies, uh, it's just a general pull test, like you just try and pull it apart. But every person is a little bit stronger or weaker. Um, some companies have dedicated machines where you put the insert in, and it tries to pull it, and it measures it using a scale as to how many uh, pounds of force or grams of force you can apply. And certain wires have certain, and certain crimps have certain amounts of maximum or I'm sorry, minimum amount of force that they need to be able to pass in order to say that the crimp passed. That way there's no difference between uh, two different people who might have different strengths in which they pull. You might have someone that pulls really, really uh, lightly or really, you know, you might have someone that really tries to pull the thing off. Uh, but it is important uh, also to be able to put the crimp on uh, in the right way. Allow me to do it incorrectly next as well to show you like what the result will be. So first of all, I'm going to strip a piece of the wire off. Now I've got a little, about a centimeter, almost three quarters of a centimeter of the wire off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a new um, crimp, if you will, and I'm going to put it into the uh, crimping tool backwards. I'm gonna put it into the crimping tool so that the teeth are, the teeth which are on uh, this side of it, are going to now pinch onto the wider side uh, of, the, uh, of the crimp, which I really kind of don't uh, want it to do. So now I'm going to insert the wire so that it goes through. And I verify that the wire is on the uh, other side of the, of the crimp for this now. So now I'm going to pinch it and, and press as hard as I can. That lets it go. And now I'm going to take this out. Now that, I, that felt like I, I crimped it, but really in the end I can just, I can pull the thing off with a very small amount of force. I felt a little bit of some force with it, but if we look at the actual crimp itself, it has pinched it on the wide end. It has not pinched it where the metal happens to be. If I were to actually pull this um, crimp out of its connector right here, you'll see that the actual crimp itself has a metal piece that sticks inside of this right there. And the metal piece for this part here is hardly deformed at all. Whereas on the one that I did earlier and first, the teeth mark have actually bitten into the plastic part right there. And I can see that the wires are sort of pinched and spread out a little bit uh, towards where that is. I don't want the wires where the screw is necessarily going to be. And I don't want the wires kind of flopping around, but I need to see that the wires are there so that the crimp is actually uh, present for that. Okay, so that is how you do a uh, simple crimp connection as part of a box build. So if you have uh, any uh, questions about this right there, leave a comment in the comments below and we will see you around on the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.